friends and partners. Last year at the Johannesburg meeting, the heads of many African states and the heads of many key regional organizations were invited. And this time, Russian presidency invited our nearest neighbors, friendly states, that we are united with the common history of living in one common state. And we see here the heads of those states that are interested in building closer partnership with the BRICS countries and considering in the future to become a member of the BRICS Association and the countries BRICS countries and considering in the future to become a member of the BRICS Association and the countries and the heads of the multilateral organization. So here we can see representatives of uh, states from Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And we are going to speak about the most topical matters, sustainable development, eradication of poverty, adapting to the climate change, knowledge and technology, transfer, counterterrorism activities, and fighting the transborder crime. And we are going also to discuss the peaceful resolution to the conflicts. And obviously, we are going to have a serious conversation on the exacerbated situation in the Middle East. It is very important to discuss all these matters with our like-minded countries from the global south and global east. We all share similar values and the vision of a new democratic world order that reflects the entire cultural and civilizational diversity. And we are convinced that this world order should be underpinned by universal principles, respect for the lawful, legitimate interests and sovereign choice of the peoples and of the nations, adherence to international national law and uh, determination to work based on equal opportunities. It's difficult to change to the new world order because it is being stopped by those countries who are used to dominating over everything and everyone. And they are trying to impose the rule-based world order, but behind these attempts there is a development of African, Asian, Latin American countries that they cannot control. And they use unlawful unilateral sanctions, protectionism, manipulation of monetary funds and markets, interference into internal affairs under the slogans of taking care of democracy and human rights and fight for mitigation of climate change. And these unhealthy methods and approaches lead to the emergence of new conflicts and exacerbation of old ones. And thus, we undermine regional and global strategic stability. We undermine the principles of equal and indivisible security. They encourage interstate conflicts. And one of such examples is Ukraine that is being used and has been used to create critical threats for Russia, ignoring our interests, our their concern of undermining the rights of the Russian speakers of the countries. And now they are not even hiding the goal of dealing a strategic defeat to our country. But that's a mere illusion. And only those who do not know history of Russia can believe in this, because they must take into consideration the strength of the spirit and unity of our people. But as we agreed among the main topics of our discussion, will be the situation in the Middle East as well, because it's also of concern to us. And here, we are speaking about the exacerbation of an old conflict, something that we've mentioned that we cannot put out, we're not able to put out for decades. And this new Israeli-Palestinian conflict is uh, one of the bloodiest ones for decades. As a result of the hostilities in Gaza Street, more than 40,000 people died, and most of them were civilians. And at the same time, and I would like to emphasize this, we have always stood against any terrorist acts. 
any terrorist manifestations. Hostilities that started a year ago in Gaza Strip now spilled over to Lebanon. Other countries of the region were also affected. The confrontation between Israel and Iran is also growing. It looks like a chain reaction, and it puts the entire Middle East on the brink of a disaster. And the humanitarian situation is also exacerbated. The displaced persons and refugees is more than one million people. The infrastructure and residential areas, hospitals, schools, social infrastructure were largely damaged and the destruction continues. Russia has a lot of questions, important questions, urgent questions that we must resolve and we are doing this and we will continue to do this, but at the same time we were always striving to make our contribution in stabilizing the situation in the Middle East. That's why since the start of the escalation, Russia and other BRICS countries joined the efforts to settle the conflict. As you remember, we even held a video summit of our organization in November 2023. Another important task, urgent task, is starting complex political process to resolve the Middle Eastern problem in full. We need to stop the violence to ensure the assistance to those who suffered, to mitigate their sufferings, to ease their suffering, and the settlement must be reached based on the recognized legal basis. Hence, the independent Palestinian state must be established that would peacefully coexist with Israel. Fixing this unfairness towards the Palestinian people can serve as a guarantee to peace in the Middle East. And until this matter is not resolved, this vicious circle of violence will not be broken. People will continue to live in the atmosphere of permanent crisis that would recur over and over again. I would like to reiterate this. The key demand to restore peace and stability in the Palestinian territories is the implementation of the two-state formula that was approved by the Security Council resolutions and the UN General Assembly. Speaking about the situation in general, I would like to emphasize that the states represented here have huge opportunities, resources, capabilities. They have high authority globally, and they employ it to ensure global security, promoting the processes of sustainable development. Many of our countries came up with their own useful initiatives. Russia came up with the idea to form non based on an inclusive, non-discriminatory basis of the system of equal and indivisible security in Eurasia. The idea is to ensure true stability and to create conditions for the peaceful development of all the countries and nations on the continent. And it is symbolic that our today's session is taking place on the day when we celebrate the United Nations organization. It is on October 24, 1945. UN Charter came into force, and its principles for almost eight decades serves as the fundament for interstate relations and international law. This organization must preserve and maintain peace and security to promote consistent and continual growth. And we believe that these structures need to adapt to the realities of the 21st century to reform the representation in the Security Council and to carry out other key reforms in regards of the countries of Asia, Africa and Latin America, including those countries whose leaders are represented here. The United Nations development and financial institutions should also be reformed. The weight of these countries has changed over the recent decades, but it is not adequately reflected in the governance systems of International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and other multilateral development institutions. Founders of the United Nations organizations saw its role in being a center to 
concerned the efforts of everyone, because only by working together collectively we can respond to the global challenges and threats to resolve such goals as the counter-terrorist activities, illegal drug trafficking, corruption, organized crime, including criminal use of information technology, and, of course, to ensure stable economic growth for the prosperity of entire mankind. It is obvious that the next wave of the global economic growth is now being born in the global majority countries. So the time has come to discuss the idea to establish the platform to tap into the potential of the rapidly growing economies, to increase investment flows to the countries of BRICS, to the countries of the global south and the global east, and to put an emphasis on investing into large-scale infrastructure and technological projects. We need to build alternative, free of any dictate, multilateral financial mechanisms logistic chains, industrial chains to ensure the transfer technology and knowledge, transfer technology and transport knowledge to ensure the stability of international transport order. Russia works with our partners on such globally important routes as the North-South Corridor and Northern Sea Route, and we invite all the interested parties to join this effort. As we all are aware, Climate plays an important role in sustainable development, and it is only logical that the international climate agenda must be aimed at working at practical solutions for the global warming problem, and we need to ensure the access for the global south and global east countries for funding and technology to help them to adapt to the climate change. I would like to emphasize that Russia strives to participate in the global climate process. Our country is one of the leaders in reducing the greenhouse gases emission, and its carbon balance is one of the greenest in the world. The share of environmentally pure gas, nuclear, hydropower generation is 85 percent in our country. In Russia, we have more than 20 percent of the global forests, and by absorbing the greenhouse gases, it helps to mitigate the climate change, and Russia makes great contribution to ensuring global food and energy security. Over the last year, we exported more than 100 million tons of agricultural produce, and we have become one of the leaders on grain supply, and we are one of the leaders among the energy exporters. Within BRICS, we have initiated the establishment of the grain trade platform, and these mechanisms will help to ensure transparent trade among both among the association members and other countries. And at the same time, I would like to note that Russia, as all the BRICS countries, are open to work with the Global South and Global East countries to promote inclusive and sustainable development with the goal to build a better world, the world where the opinions and interests of every nation would be taken into consideration, their right for sovereign development will be respected, their sovereignty would be respected, and the value value of all the cultures, traditions and religions will be recognized. I hope that today's discussion will be constructive and uh, thorough and will make significant contribution to resolving international and regional issues. Thank you for your attention and it is my pleasure to give the floor to the President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping.